What is up, everybody? Calvin Bowie, AKA Captain Charisma. This is my last meal in the Bay Area, and we are back in San Mateo at Gal Vit Kitchen. Is it about, is it Gal Vit Kitchen and Bar? Uh, we are gonna go into some street food specialties. So these are things that I uh, grew up eating here in the Bay Area, but I've also been eating this for the last 12 years in Vietnam. But the way they do it, they do it in the sense where they use really some of the best ingredients you're gonna get your hands onto. I'm gonna turn the camera around. These are three dishes that I love to eat. Uh, one of the dishes is actually my favorite Vietnamese dish of all time. We're gonna drink some passion fruit, uh, coconut drink. Yeah, there, there, there's no coffee in there. It's a uh, coconut ice cream, passion fruit. It tastes really tropical. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna show you what we're working with right now. Here we go. One, two, three. All right, I'm gonna say the, my favorite dish for the last. This is Ben Cot. So Ben Cot is a mung bean cake with coconut milk, and they use these beautiful prawns. I mean, these are huge in size. I promise you in Vietnam, we would not use prawns that big. So you wrap it up with lettuce, mint, cilantro, and some pickled vegetables. You give it a dip in the fish sauce. And then we got ban bèo, which is a, a regional dish known for in the Hue region, the Hue region, sorry. <laughs> Uh, this is rice flour and they make a batter out of it and they steam it. They have um, dried shrimp, fried shallots and scallion and scallion oil. This is a dish that I've been eating since I was a young child. And last but not least, my probably all time most favorite Vietnamese dish and I've said it before in so many episodes. It's bánh cuốn. Bánh cuốn is basically uh, thin sheets of rice. It's rice flour. How would I describe this? It's thin sheets and then they roll it with uh, pork, wood tree mushroom, shrimp, uh, and they have a little bit of steamed pork loaf and nem nung, which is a ground pork cake uh that's wrapped over sugarcane and again this is all foods that you'll find uh in saigon and in other regions i'm going to make sure that the camera is is a little bit lower so i want you guys to really see what we're eating okay so let's get some fish sauce out so this is fish sauce that's been mixed with lime uh, sugar, garlic, and for me, I need, I don't need, that's like an addict. I like to have, um, I like to have chili in, in my food. So start off with the bánh bèo. So what I like about bánh bèo is it's these like little individual cakes. If you've gone to Korea, they have topoki. Uh, I don't know any other really Southeast Asian region that does this. But you make a very simple batter with rice flour, water, and salt. I don't think there's any yeast in there, no. But rice flour, water, and salt. You put it into the uh, little, little bowl. Yeah, little bowl, little mini plate. And then you steam it off into the, into the uh, steamer couple minutes and then it solidifies the the cake itself the rice flour cake itself doesn't have any flavor but it's what's on top of it it's the uh, dried shrimp it's the fried shallots it's a scallion oil and you know you could cut half of it these are a lot larger than the ones that we had in Vietnam <laughs> and the size of this is like uh, like my palm I think that's a really good assessment. 
is that it's the size of my palm. In Vietnam, this would be half the size, so it's really easy to knock back. Uh, but let's knock it back right now. Let's. Oh, I miss I miss Saigon. It's been uh, it's been a month since I've been gone. I miss street food. I miss this kind of dining. A uh, little bit of everything. <clears throat> it can be an afternoon snack. It could be uh, dinner, an early dinner. I'm literally going to try and do this whole thing in one in one bite. Here we go. Mm. Exactly what you'll get in Vietnam. No doubt. Mm. There's a sweetness to this. Almost like coconut milk. I wonder if he added coconut milk to the batter to get that richness, to get the um, consistency, but also that really nice sweetness. Okay, one more. Again, fried shrimp. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, dried shrimp, fried shallots, scallion oil. Super delicious. There's something, there's something even like this in, I guess, a culinary term, right? I've, I've eaten a lot of food, but there's something about this that is really, really magical. Definitely coconut milk in there. <clears throat> and then the rice, the rice cake, it's, it's, it's like a cloud. It, it's so light, it's airy. It's, it's, it's like a UFO. I, I, I hate to use that crazy little term, but I told you I was, I was gonna do, I was gonna, I was gonna quit after that last one, but I'll do one more. So what you wanna do is you wanna run your, run your spoon around the edge and what it'll do, it, it'll, it's, it'll come up off the plate. You know, if you, if you don't like chili, you don't really put chili in your fish sauce, but I think it brings another element to the uh, umami factor of the fish sauce. Here we go, one more bite. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's so good. So spicy. Um, it's called ban bao, B-A-N-H-B-E-O. Google it. Mm. There's plenty of recipes online, but I think he put, um, I think he put some coconut milk in there because there's a sweetness to it. I just can't put my, my finger on. I'm right, making sure you guys can see me well. All right. Oh. Bancot, B-A-N-H, uh, space K-H-O-T. This is like the cousin of the ban sao. And ban sao is a Vietnamese pancake that's made of mung bean. This is more of a <clears throat> smaller version, similar to a tartlet. And uh, mung bean, coconut milk, um, mung, bean, mung bean flour, coconut milk, you make a batter out of that. There are little Bencot pans that are individual. Uh, I know that in Japan, there is the... What do they call that with the... With the, with, with, with the octopus? Oh, man. All right. There's a pan that has... It's, 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 it's a... Round sa saute pan, and in it there's just little divots. <clears throat> and you want to. <clears throat> a key to a good ban cot is the crispy edge on the bottom. And you really want to see that crispy edge, but you don't want the. I'm going to turn it around. <clears throat> you want that to cook through, but you want that crispy bottom. In, in it, they fill it with uh, more scallion oil. And scallion oil is basically just scally or green onions and, uh, and, and vegetable oil. Get the vegetable oil super hot. 
you toss it into the uh, the green onions and it'll wilt down and make this beautiful scallion oil. What you want to do is you want to take a piece of lettuce, some mint, uh, some cilantro, and then you want to just make a mini uh, burrito, if you may. And then you want to dip this. I'm not really good at rolling. This is why I don't roll. Uh, so I don't roll well. Regardless of what's in, what's, what's in there, I don't roll well. I, mean, I, I just kind of make a boat out of it. Because I know I'm going to eat it anyways. I mean, what's, what's the use to like roll it and make it pretty? Dip it again into the, uh, to the flavored fish sauce. First and foremost, it's the quality of the shrimp. Well, these prawns are no joke. And mm, it's the first thing that hits you really hard is that sweetness of the, of, the, of the shrimp, of the prawn, wherever you're from. We call it shrimp in, 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 in the West. The next flavor you get is that mung bean. You, how to explain mung bean? I can't, I can't, I can't find the words for you. I really can't. But it's definitely something that once you try, it's sweet, it's doughy, um, it's aromatic. Mm. Oh God. The flavors that are coming off of something that's so easy. Three ingredients. The batter, green onion, and shrimp. Mm. I'm going to just eat this without the, the herbs, the, the, the greens. Just kind of give you a, a better idea of what it looks like. Again, it's like little tartlet shells. Mmm. Now, Vietnamese cooking, mm, sorry, Vietnamese cooking is not something that's super heavy. It's all about sharing. Yes, you can get a bencot and have it for a light dinner. You got protein, you got carbs, and you got vegetables. Super great meal. Bánh bèo, I wouldn't say it will fill you up, but it's definitely a great snack. Um, we did a video recently with Nin where we had Ben Bao in Saigon and it's, it, it, it's a really fun thing to eat. Now, it's all about sharing food, it's about sharing experience, it's about you know, coming to a restaurant like Gao in San Mateo and ordering a little bit of everything. You know, this is a street food menu. This is exactly what we eat in Saigon. This is as authentic as you're going to get to what we, what we eat. Uh, we probably don't use as good of shrimp, uh, but the flavors definitely are there. And I do appreciate uh, places like Gao and, and other uh, higher end Vietnamese establishment. We get amazing, and I say we because I'm still Californian. We get amazing produce all year long. And, you, and, and we get great uh, seafood and and everything. So, elevating something like Vietnamese food isn't isn't hard when you have really great quality ingredients. Now, I added a little more fish sauce to this bowl. I'm gonna add a little more chili, and I'm gonna go into my favorite dish. Bánh cuốn is something that I've been eating uh, since I was growing up, and I can tell you right now that. I like anything that has a very noodle base. So anything with rice flour, I'm a huge fan of. What you do is you make a really nice, or you make a really thin batter. 
This is Mitt, <laughs> Mr. No. Chef and owner. Ban Kwat Makat was really good. Did you put coconut milk in your ban bao? Uh, yeah, a little bit. See, I told you. I told you. There's a sweetness <laughs> you, to you it. Know what you, you uh, know yeah, what there's you a need. sweetness to it that I was like, this, it's so aromatic. Hi, how you doing? And so I'm going to go to the ban bao, right? Or ban? The, the best hair, uh, hair stylist in the Bay Area. Oh, why? Well, how really? you doing? Very good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Best hairstylist in the Bay Area. Go find, go find her. She's in San Mateo. Okay, so we're gonna go to the Ban Bao. And again, uh, for me, this is a very northern dish in Hanoi. This is what we eat. Well, when I'm traveling up there for, for shoots, this is what I eat every single morning. You make a very nice, you make, I said nice again. You make a very thin batter of rice flour and water and some vegetable oil. And you, you know, in, in Vietnam, there's these you know, huge bamboo steamers, and you put the you put the uh, you put the batter on top, put the lid on, and it gets this really thin crepe. I mean, it's 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 translucent. It's so thin, and you stuff it with again pork, shrimp, wood ear mushrooms. Uh, I don't know what else he put in here, but we're about to find out. And then you roll it up. This is a this is a, a dish that is truly a labor of love. I mean, if you have a mother-in-law like I do, who makes this for you, it is, it is heavenly. Because the crepe is so thin. It, again, it's translucent thin. I, again, you're not seeing the best pictures right now. Uh, and then you, 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 roll, you roll it. Anyways, I'm gonna go right into this because I've spoken enough about Ban Kuan. Here we go. Oh, mmm. So over bite. The chewiness, the texture, that's what makes ban kuan. Even though it's one humongous one, it's a one big uh, thin sheet. When you when you stuff the middle with that pork strip wood, wood tree mushroom mixture, and you roll it, you get all these little layers, um, and it makes it, it makes for something that's super uh, chewy, but not chewy in the way where it's not tender because it's super tender, it's super light. The flavors are just popping right now in my mouth. <clears throat> and I gotta say, that is D-A-R-N good. Darn good. It is as good as you will find at any street stall in Hanoi. Oh, that's getting a little bit spicy. <clears throat> it's accompanied by uh, nam nuong, and nam nuong is ground pork. They wrap it, they wrap it over some sugar cane, they grill it off. Mmm. Oh. I always complain about food that's not flavorful, that's not pushing the envelope when it comes to savory, sweet. But the food I had today is hitting every single note. It's, you got the great textures, you got the funk and the umami from the dried shrimp, the fish sauce. You have really savoriness in this nam nuum. And I don't think that even in Vietnam, this, the, the nam nuum is this good. Mm. I gotta say, I really gotta say, this meal in itself, their street eats, their uh, homage to uh, Vietnamese street food. And this is three regions, right? Ban Kuan, although you can have it anywhere in Vietnam, it's known in the northern region, uh, specifically Hanoi. You got the central region with the Ban Bao. Uh, and then 
the Mankot is a very southern region. It's a very um, Mintai, which is the Mekong Delta dish. So you're really, between these three things, you are going to be able to taste the entire Vietnam. If I had to choose one dish, that's my favorite of the three, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But if I had to choose one dish, I'm going to say it's going to be the Ban Kuan. And the, the margin of goodness between all three is so slim. And I only picked it because I had to pick one or else you can just say, uh, Calvin, you, 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 know, you cheated, you, 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 you chose all three. One out of 10, I'm going to give every dish a solid nine, a solid nine. And I never rate, if you watch this far into my channel, we're at like episode 58, 59 now, I've never put a number onto, onto this, onto food in general, because I'm not a food critic, right? I'm only here to, to host, to say some words, and to tell you what's on the plate. But everything's a nine, and that ban kuon is just that 9.2. It's just that, it's just something special about it. Again, it's that chewiness, it's that texture, it's that roll texture, it's translucent. They use really quality ingredients in everything that we eat today. So if you are in the Bay Area and you want to see what the food is like uh, in Vietnam, come over to the gal. Uh, I'm looking at the address right now. Darn it. I really thought I could see the address somewhere outside, but I can't see it. I'll leave the description below uh, to their restaurant. and. You know, you don't have to order the whole menu or these three things. Start off with that. It's a great intro to what Vietnamese food is. It is fresh. It is uh, flavorful. It is uh, not heavy. And there's lots of vegetables around for that added crunch and freshness. This was a really, really good meal. This is my last meal for the Bay Area tour. So with that said, uh, I wanted to say thank you to Gal for not only uh, hosting us for the $79 Fazilla, but for the Street Eats today. I want to thank you guys for sitting through uh, all of these Bay Area episodes. We'll be heading off to Minnesota next, and after that we'll be down, going down to LA uh, for that tour. And we are now monetized on YouTube, so if you can sit through those ads, uh, it really helps us out. It helps us as creators to make a little bit of money. Um, that money goes into supporting small businesses like Gal, like all the other restaurants in the Bay Area. Uh, so we really appreciate you doing that. Um, if you want to be a co-host and I'm in your city, let me know. Uh, you can email us at fkndeliciousness at gmail.com and um, I usually announce that I'm going to a uh, city a few weeks in advance so I kind of get a, a good gauge of who wants to be a co-host of that. If you want to support the show and get a shout out uh, on this show, the cost is $100 but I will, on an episode, on an on a, on a episode coming up, I will Say your name, I will say whatever message you want, whether it's a happy birthday, happy anniversary, will you marry me, um, let me know. The cost on that is $100, that goes to support the show and what we do. So we're trying to find ways to uh, monetize and we're trying to find a way to uh, make a little bit of money uh, as we continue on and do our travels. Other than that, like, subscribe, share, and comment if you have any questions about the foods that we had today on the show. Let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer them the best way possible. Um, these recipes are online. I'm sure you, you'll be able to find them. Google now has a ton of great recipes, but if you need any help with how to make this stuff, uh, let me know. Message me on Instagram at fkdeliciousness. You can email us at the Gmail account or just leave it in the comments and I'll try to find a way to uh, answer those questions. What else? That's it. I, 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 I as, as, as a creator, am so grateful 
And uh, for everybody who has supported us thus far and just been through the journey with us, uh, thank you for your uh, DMs on, on, on Instagram or your comments or even your views. You know, it really shows us that we're doing something really special and I'm having a great time doing it. So with that being said, my name is Calvin Bowie. This show is called FK and Deliciousness. I want to say thank you to everybody who's participated in, this, in the Bay Area. Uh, all the way from San Francisco down to Gilroy. Thank you so much for the co-host, for the restaurant. And uh, we can't wait to continue our journey and keep filming for you guys. So with that being said, I will see you guys later.